In this video, we will talk about the negative energy solutions of the Dirac equation. In particular, we will present two interpretations of those negative energy states, called the Dirac C interpretation and the feynman stuckelberg interpretation. When we solve the Dirac equation using a plane wave ansatz, we can have two kinds of solutions. Positive energy solutions, psi1, which have a U of p e to the minus ip0t plus ipx, and negative energy solutions, psi2 equal to v of p e to the plus ip0t minus ipx. In both cases, p0 is the positive square root of p squared plus m squared, which is a positive number. So first of all, why is psi2 called a negative energy solution? If we compare the exponential of psi2 to the usual time evolution phase e to the minus iet of non-relativistic quantum mechanics, we see that the energy in this case has to be minus p0, which is a negative number. But negative energies are strange. So how do we make sense of it? Let's now talk about two interpretations of the state psi2. First, the Dirac C interpretation, also known as whole theory. It states that psi2 really has energy minus p0 and momentum minus p, but it is unobservable. We have to assume that all negative energy states in our universe are already filled, which is known as the Dirac C. In order to observe one of these states, we first have to annihilate them from the vacuum. It might sound strange to annihilate something in order to observe it, but the state already exists, so we cannot create it again. Now, if we annihilate a state of energy, momentum and spin minus p0 minus p s, we get something with the properties plus p0 plus p minus s. This sign flipping is similar to the fact that adding one negative charge is equivalent to removing one positive charge. In summary, this interpretation assumes the Dirac C, which is a collection of an infinite number of unobservable negative energy states. If we want to observe one, we have to annihilate the corresponding state and get a state of flipped properties. Now on to the second interpretation, the feynman stuckelberg interpretation. Nowadays, this is the preferred way to look at negative energy solutions. It starts with a bold premise. We say that the negative energy solutions of the Dirac equation actually travel backwards in time. Mathematically, this is equivalent to a positive energy traveling forwards in time, since multiplying two negative numbers is the same as multiplying the same two positive numbers. We now define these states to be antiparticles. This means that all quantum charges are reversed, so for example electric charge, spin, lepton number, and so on. Imagine we want to describe an electron using the Dirac equation. Psi1 describes a usual electron, and Psi2 describes an electron traveling backwards in time. Since mathematically, a simultaneous flip of energy and time does not change anything, we define an antiparticle as a particle traveling backwards in time, having flipped quantum charges. Before we conclude this video, we have to convince you that these interpretations lead to the same physics, that is, to the same observable quantity. So imagine we want to measure the helicity of a particle, so we ask, are spin and momentum parallel or antiparallel? We choose coordinates such that the particle travels in z-direction, and also use eigenstates of sigma z for the spinners with s equals 1. First, the unobservable negative energy state in the Dirac C. The momentum is minus p, so it goes in negative z direction. Its spin is up, so they are antiparallel, which means left-handed. Second, the observable positive energy state, which was annihilated from the Dirac C. All properties are flipped compared to the first case. So the momentum is in positive z direction, but the spin is down. It's again antiparallel, therefore left-handed. Third, the interpretation as an antiparticle. The momentum is in positive z direction, and the spinner is 1, 0. However, for an antiparticle, we have to flip all quantum charges. So eta1, which is 1, 0, is actually a spin down, and eta2 is spin up. So spin and momentum are again antiparallel, which leads to left-handedness. Although the feynman stuckelberg interpretation and introducing antiparticles is more common today, 
it is definitely a good idea to know about other approaches. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.